Can your heavy foreign accent be comedy gold? Hi, Jerry Corley, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. In this episode, we're going to be discussing accents and how accents can be your comedy gold, which is, uh, I've been getting some questions lately, a lot of questions, a few actually, well, I'll say but maybe half a dozen questions from people asking about accents. Let's face it, comedy is blowing up around the world. I mean, blowing up. And it's so exciting because I've been doing this all my life and now to see it just, you know, and I taught in Moscow, Russia uh, for a, a little bit and I got to see comedy start in Russia, in Moscow. I got to meet the guy who started the first open mic in Moscow, which is really amazing. And now to see all over the world, it's, it's just taking off. I just spoke to a friend of mine who's going back to China and uh, comedy is really exploding in China as well. So in Egypt, in the Middle East, in Mexico, Mexico City, in Japan, in Germany, uh, in, uh, in Finland, you know, there was uh, Ismo, which we'll feature later, uh, later on, was the first Finnish comic to appear on a late night show uh, in, the, in the United States. So that's exciting. Uh, but your accent, your accent, uh, can it be beneficial to you? Absolutely. And it's a coincidence that these questions came up just now. I just got hit with a bunch of these questions about accents on Twitter. And because um, in this class, this last class that I just had, we had six or seven people in the class that have profound accents. One is from South Africa, uh, Upasana. She has a uh, South African accent slash Indian Asian accent. And then we have uh, Laura Dana, who is from Romania. She has, a, has an accent. Uh, then we have, uh, uh, we have Amy from, uh, Amy Peterson Gonzalez from Venezuela. She has a very strong accent. We have another gal, Christina, who is, uh, get this, uh, Venezuelan and Norwegian. So sort of a bipolar accent uh, going on there. Uh, then we have uh, Xiao Yao, who's from uh, China. Uh, we had a woman just last semester from Taiwan. She just moved back to Taiwan and uh, who has an accent. So accents can, and I also have one of my favorite students of all time. Uh, she's been with me for a while. Uh, her name is uh, Eugenia Kuzmina. Eugenia has a Russian accent. So accents can be beneficial to you. Here's why. When you have an accent, and you're in the United States and you talk about how your accent gets in your way sometimes, you're now what's known as a fish out of water. And a fish out of water states dilemma right at the beginning of your act. It's like, if you remember the movie Crocodile Dundee, you had Crocodile Dundee who came from Australia and when they did Crocodile Dundee in New York, here was this Australian guy in New York City. What an incongruous relationship, right? So immediately being uh, from another country and having an accent and being here in the United States, you're, you have incongruous relationships. You have a, you're juxtaposing your accent and your language with uh, American English. Uh, and we can also make fun of the British who come over here with the, we, I always tease them, like, you're using the, I don't understand you, you're using the Queen's English. Uh, so um, you know, what language are you speaking? Uh, so it's, you can actually utilize this to your advantage. Here's the difference between the comedy stage and every other stage in the world. Your perceived flaws in comedy are seen as a great advantage. So let's take a look at the, the tweet I got. It's from Yonen. Yonen, I'm, I'm wondering if Yonen is either Swedish or Norwegian. I'm not really sure. Yonen is a, uh, it sounds like a, like a, uh, sounds like that region of the world, Scandinavian uh, name. Uh, so Yonen asks, um, do you have any tips for foreigners trying to do stand-up comedy? People with a heavy foreign accent with a passion for stand-up comedy. Well, Yonan, if you're in the United States, absolutely, uh, here are the tips. One of the tips, and I see this with everybody who speaks their native language first, and as English is a second uh, language, or in Eugenia's case, her fourth language was English. Uh, they speak too, they try to speak too fast. So, there's also something called your transition phrases. Your transition phrases are phrases that lead us into the next sentence or end a sentence or connect 
two sentences. Those we usually sort of say, we'll say, uh, will be sort of like that sort of thing. We're sort of like that, you know, when I say, well, yeah, so it was sort of like, when we say things like that, uh, he, he wore these clothes that, um, that you'd never see anywhere. It was like, that it was like, has to be enunciated. So those transition phrases, also the beginnings and ends of your sentences have to slow down. You know, what's interesting about this is that it's not only with somebody who speaks a foreign language. I'm working with uh, a guy who's 90% deaf, and he did his first show on stage uh, just this last Saturday, uh, and one of the things we, we coached on just before he, the day before he went up was slowing down and making sure that the words at the end of a sentence were slowed down and the words at the beginning of a sentence were slowed down because that's where the tendency is to speed up. One of the reasons this happens is our brain is focused on expectation. We know what the ending is, so we're trying to get to the end of a statement so we can convey that piece of information to the audience before we move on to the next statement. So slowing down is absolutely essential so that the audience understands you. We love accents. We, as audiences, we love accents. The other, but you have to slow down so we can understand what you're saying. If we don't understand it, the joke isn't gonna be funny. So make sure you slow down so that we understand you. Secondly, um, to utilize the fact that your accent gets in your way, you can talk about how you mess up language uh, with, with your accent. The comedy stage is like no other. Your perceived flaws become your comedy gold. We talked about that. The bigger your flaws, the better your comic character. Uh, that being said, you're a fish, you could be a fish out of water. That plays really well with the audience because we're rooting for you the entire time. So we see your dilemma. You're facing a dilemma, and the dilemma is you don't understand English or you confuse things with English. Like take simple colloquialisms and metaphors we use. There's a metaphor out here, you know, if a guy sees a girl, he's like, I want to hit that. And that means I want to have sex with that woman, right? Now, we've heard that phrase, I want to hit that. So maybe Yonan, who's uh, maybe Scandinavian, doesn't know this phrase. So he hears, I want to hit that. And, he, you know, he thinks that you, why do, why do, why do the men are violent in, uh, in America? Do you know what I'm saying? So we can play that to its simple truth rather than the metaphorical truth. Or you could screw up aphorisms or idioms. One of my students, the Norwegian uh, Venezuelan, she was, uh, you know, she says instead of it's, a, uh, it's not my cup of tea, she says it's not my cup of cake. And she gets just a quick laugh on that um, when she screws up a, an idiom that we're all familiar with the ending on. You know, if you think about, uh, it's like a cliche reformation technique, but using the accent. So screwing up the words or doing, or, you know, using those, um, um, what do they call those, uh, malapropisms. You know, malapropisms can be very effective. It, you know, if you remember Norm Crosby, the comedian back in the day, he used malapropisms all the time. That's misappropriating words, using them for their wrong meaning um, and screwing up the room. Now, you have two things that are going on, right? The two major laughter triggers you're engaging as a comedian who has a foreign accent or a heavy accent is superiority. The audience feels superior to you, which is exactly where you want the audience to be when you're a comedian. Because comedians are just trying to get from point A to point B and encountering obstacles. What more obvious obstacle than a heavy accent or a misunderstanding of the language, right? So you can use this to your advantage. The other thing that's in play here is embarrassment. You know, you can create an embarrassing situation. One of the ones that just comes right off the top of my head is like a sexual situation. You're with a woman, right? And you're, she's saying she wants something a certain way. And now you're interpreting what she's saying literally, right? And you're misunderstanding it. And so using the misunderstanding of the language to communicate your obstacles to the audience. You want a certain goal, you know, you want to have sex with this one woman, you want to make love with this woman you hooked up with, but you keep confusing what she's saying and doing, you know, the, what would, might be the simple truth or the literal meaning of what she said, but she means something like metaphorically, uh, hit me from behind or whatever, 
uh, and then uh, you smack her, and she's like, I hate when people touch me like that. And he's like, wait, wait a second, you said hit you from behind. What do you, <laughs> I'm, con I'm confused. You know what I'm saying? So you can utilize that accent to your advantage. Um, there's another way you can do it is misunderstand words. One of my comedians, she talks about her aunt and how her aunt always talks negative about people. She's a big gossip and she never says anything positive. positive. And then um, one time she's talking, she's on the phone and she's like, and she calls her, um, she calls her up and she says, I'm so excited. Did you hear about Juan? Juan is going to Yale. Juan is going to Yale. And I was really excited because Juan's going to, going to Yale. And it turns out he wasn't going to Yale. Uh, he was going to jail. She just has a heavy accent. And so now you have that joke that plays because of the misunderstanding of the word. We thought we were getting the one meaning of the word based on how it sounds, but we're getting a different meaning of the word. So heavy accents can, can be total comedy gold. Play that to your advantage. Plus, it makes you more memorable. So, you know, you, we have a ton of average white comedians out there, tons of us, right? Not as many females, not as many black comedians, not as many Hispanic comedians, but you notice the good Hispanic comedians have tremendous support from their community because, you know, birds of a feather, in other words, we're going to support, you're going to support the, the Mexican comedian or the Latino comedian or Latina comedian up there performing because, you know, support your own in, 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 in other words. That happens a lot. Um, you have, if you have a Hindi comedian, uh, so you have uh, Russell Peters who's Indian, right? Uh, so you have a huge community of people, a billion people in that country who are supporting, uh, supportive of Russell, Russell Peters. You know, you can go places and have a lot of Twitter followers if you're Russell Peters. But um, um, if you have an accent and you're on stage, you become much more memorable. If we take a look at Ismo, we mentioned him earlier, he was on Conan, the first Finnish comedian on Conan. He does a whole bit, his whole bit on Conan, so the four and a half minutes he was on the Late Show there was on the word ass, and how he, didn't, he thought he understood the meaning of the word ass, but he doesn't understand the meaning of the word ass. <laughs> and, uh, and, and to make it even more complicated, Ass can be divided. Like, because if you are an ass, that means that you're being stupid. But if you're half ass, <laughs> then, 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 it, uh, then it, it, means that, uh, it means that you are not concentrating properly. <laughs> and if you go even smaller, if you are a piece of ass, <laughs> then you are beautiful. He thought he understood the meaning of the word ass, but he doesn't understand the meaning of the word ass. So look it up on YouTube. It's a funny bit, and it might give you some real cool inspiration on how you can utilize your accent to reach comedy gold. I mean, th think about it. He has, and he's now on uh, a late show, and he's going to be going places because he has a really cool television clip. And from this, he's probably going to get some other spots on TV because the audience loved this bit. In fact, these, this video has gone pretty viral. So check it out. I think, I think you'll get some inspiration from this as far as your heavy accent and how valuable that can actually be to you in the comedy world. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I hope it helped you out. And think about it, those, like I talked about those average white dudes, you're not at a loss if you can bring in a character, if you can do an accent with a really, uh, I mean, do an impression of somebody with a really cool accent, that character can bring you benefits as well. I, I like do this character that kind of has this, like a Jeff Spicoli kind of stoner character, but he doesn't do drugs sort of thing. Uh, and I used to go on the road and open for myself as this character named Charlie Stone. And that's, um, that's how I sort of uh, scaled or leveraged my, my road work, is I was actually getting paid twice for uh, me appearing and then Charlie Stone who appeared before me, but he was a totally committed st <laughs> stoner voice, bro, <laughs> no way, that kind of thing. And so he got away with a lot more humor uh, of um, wordplay than I would uh, as Jerry Corley. So you could see the advantage that we all have. If you can do a character that has a nice, nice powerful uh, accent, bring them in, have them be your, your alter ego on stage, 
And uh, you can utilize that trick to your advantage too, because audiences love that kind of diversity and that added dynamic in your act. I hope this video brought you some value in your day, and I hope I answered your question, uh, Yonan, and everybody else who had asked the question about the heavy accent. Uh, I hope it helps you out. Um, if you have a question, go ahead and uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter. I'm at, at Joke Doctor, and use the hashtag AskTheJokeDoctor and ask any question you want, and I'll put together a little video just like this one for you. Take care. Hope to see you again really soon. And don't forget, if you like this channel, if you're enjoying these videos, I enjoy putting them together and uh, getting you some uh, information. Uh, if you like these videos, hit subscribe and uh, share them with your friends. Let everybody, those guys you know that may be needing a little help in certain areas, uh, if one of these pieces of subject matter hits that area, go ahead and uh, you can share it with them or go ahead and hit me up on Twitter or ask them to hit me up on Twitter with their question and I'll answer it for them in a video like this. I try to do them as much as possible. Uh, and uh, this year I'm putting together a few more. Uh, I'll be, I've been, I'm hoping to hit at least 100 this year. So uh, just keep asking those questions and I'll put them out there for you. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.